All right, Dolphins fans, you guys did it. You got to 100 subs on our brand new Miami Dolphins only YouTube channel. So we're going to give you guys a mailbag video coming up. But if you want another one, the next target is 300. So you can go down there. You see the link at the bottom of your screen, chatsports.com slash Dolphins TV. That will take you directly to our new Dolphins YouTube channel. But that link, the full YouTube link, is also going to be in the comments and in the description. Let's go to Kurt Wagner using hashtag Dolphins like a smart guy. Should the Finns trade for Dalvin Cook? I actually don't mind that idea. I'm not fully convinced that Jordan Howard and or Matt Breed are the long-term answer at the position for Miami. I do think Dalvin Cook would be in. At some level, it's kind of a, a homecoming of sorts for Cook going back to the state of Florida. The issue that I have here for Miami is that do you want to give up the draft pick that it would cost and pay him a bunch of money? The Dolphins probably aren't going to be a super high-level contender this year. Maybe you could just wait a little bit, and maybe you see what Matt Breida and Jordan Howard have, and if things still aren't going well for Cook or a different running back, like maybe Fournette in free agency, you can try again next offseason. So I would explore it if I, if I was Miami. That's kind of part of their job in, in terms of being an organization. But I'm not sure it makes the most sense to give up that amount of money and the draft pick for what is one of the easier to replace positions in the NFL. Of course, he would be a big addition. So I want to hear from you guys. Should Miami trade for Dalvin Cook? You can cast your votes for me down in the comments section. Type Y for yes or type N for no if you think Miami should add Dalvin Cook. From DC MMA, how about Clowney to the Dolphins? This has been a, a rumor out there for almost a year at this point, getting close to it, because the Dolphins have tried to acquire Clowney in the past. They tried to trade for him, and Clowney wasn't going to have that, didn't want to play in Miami. They tried to sign him in free agency, and Clowney also said no. Now, maybe the third time is the charm for Clowney and for the Dolphins. I just don't think it's going to happen. Clowney apparently doesn't want to play in Miami. I guess he thinks they're not good enough, kind of like the Browns. So it would, it would be a good fit. But I just don't think it's going to end up happening. From David Musco, if the Dolphins get Jamal Adams, would it make them a playoff team considering the offense is subpar? I mean, the defense got overhauled. We'll see how much different it ends up being, but it wasn't very good last year. I don't think that, A, the Jets, if they were to ever trade Adams, would ever trade him in division. They don't want to face him two times a year. And then on top of that, I don't think Adams wants to go to Miami because I don't think Adams makes them a playoff team. The, the common thread for all of Jamal Adams' trade spots, his preferred trade destinations, all of these teams, or almost all of these teams, they are legitimate playoff, if not Super Bowl contenders. That's just not Miami right now. The, the Niners, the Seahawks, the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Ravens, the Chiefs, Texans, the Bucks, all those teams are a lot closer to winning Super Bowls than the Dolphins are right now. Now, in the event that Adam said, you know what, yeah, I'd be willing to go down to Miami, I'm curious what you guys would offer in a trade for Adams. Maybe it'd look a lot like the Minka Fitzpatrick trade. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. From Charles Lander, when will the Dolphins start Tua? That's a billion-dollar question, right? I'm not sure when the Dolphins will end up starting Tua. The health is a major question mark for year one. We don't know exactly what camp in the preseason will look like. And in general, if you have a quarterback that you are rightfully worried about the injuries, both short-term and long-term, you normally don't want to throw him behind a bad offensive line. And at least early on, that's what the Dolphins are going to be looking at. Now, I feel pretty confident at some point you're going to see Tua. Maybe it's not week one. Maybe it's like week four. It's probably way before their bye, which comes in the back half of the season. But I think you'll see Tua at some point this season. Speaking of Tua, there is a whole bunch of Tua-related Dolphins gear on sale. Head over to chatsports.com slash Tua. The jersey you see right there, as low as 80 bucks. That's the cheapest you're going to find out there. But of course, it's not just jerseys. There's some autographed gear, some simple t-shirts for Tua if you don't want to spend the jersey price tag. That link will be in the comments, and it will be in the description. It's chatsports.com slash Tua. Over to Sean, speaking of more Tua, 
Does he have a good chance at Offensive Rookie of the Year? I think Joe Burrow is correctly the favorite to win Rookie of the Year. The odds have him there as well. Two is at plus 750. Again, we mentioned the we don't know when he's going to start aspect. That's why the odds are low. If Tua was guaranteed to start week one, he'd probably be up there at like plus 250. He'd probably be right there neck and neck with Joe Burrow, given how often quarterbacks end up winning the award. In terms of the value, if you think Tua gets on the field earlier, if you think he gets on the field maybe by week four or five, I think he's got a pretty decent chance. I think Burrow makes the most sense, but Tua at plus 750, actually a decent odd there. Over to longtime subscriber Bray. Who is more likely to break out this season, Mike Kosicki or Preston Williams? Take your pick. I, both of these players, I think, are primed for a breakout year, especially if they mesh quickly with Tua in his first year as a starter. Now, Mike got more involved as the year went on, wasn't a full-time starter last year, but we know he's a fantastic athlete. I think he could be heavily involved in this offense. Meanwhile, Preston Williams, the numbers don't necessarily jump out to you until you remember he missed time last year. He only played in eight games. So if you could double those figures, all of a sudden you're looking at almost 900 yards, a bunch, a couple touchdowns, a bunch of receptions. That's intriguing. So I don't really think there's a wrong answer here, to, to be quite honest. I think both Kasiki and Williams are primed for a breakout season. So I want to hear from you guys. Who do you think is more likely to break out? Now, I'll eventually take a side here as, as well and stop being a coward. It's G for Mike Kosicki, W for Preston Williams. I'm going to type in my G because I feel most confident about Mike having the volume to really sustain the, the, the prototypical breakout season. Over to Reggie Jordan. Did the free agent pickups and the draft really improve the Dolphins' offensive line? Great question. Now, I will be upfront and honest here when I say I still don't love the unit for the Miami Dolphins when it comes to the offensive line. But, yeah, I think, I think they're better. I think Austin Jackson will maybe not necessarily week one, but at some point in year one be an upgrade at left tackle. Eric Flowers wasn't horrible at guard for the Redskins last year. A drastic change from what we've seen with his time with the Giants. So, I mean, it's better than what they had. Ted Karras is better than what they had. Michael Dieter, I have promise in year two. I think Jesse Davis might lose his job. I think Robert Hunt ends up being a starter at some point in year one, be it at guard or at tackle. My biggest concern is that it's going to take time for the offensive line. So long term, yeah, I think they improved, even though I probably wouldn't have invested in the way that they did. Not sure I would have thrown that much money at Flowers or taken Jackson that early, but I do think they're going to end up being a better offensive line in the long run. All right, guys, this is a competition. We've made that pretty clear in the past. If you want the Dolphins channel to be a full-time channel here at Chat Sports, you guys got to prove it. We gave the Seahawks a chance. They've impressed so far. You're playing catch-up right now behind the Cardinals and the Dolphins. So go subscribe right now. Chat Sports, or the Cardinals and Browns, excuse me. That obviously, you're the Dolphins. Chatsports.com slash Dolphins TV. And again, the full links in the comments and in the description. From DCMMA, that's right. Can the Dolphins finish with a top 10 defense? I, I get it. You guys are excited because that defense looks brand spanking new, at least at several of the key positions. I'm going to go with no. Now, I, I like to use DVOA, which is a nerd number, to evaluate defensive play. Dolphins were dead last in the NFL last year, 32nd. 25th, 28th, 19th. In fact, the last time the Dolphins had a top 10 defense, was all the way back in 2010. So no, I don't think they're going to have a top 10 defense all of a sudden. Will they be better? Absolutely. There is nowhere to go but up, and I do like many of the moves that they made, and I like the way that they're trending. But much like the offense, the defense is still a work in progress. I do not anticipate this being an overnight instant change to the Dolphins suddenly having one of the better defenses in the NFL. As a reminder, folks, the, the Dolphins Tua gear is on sale. That jersey, under 80 bucks. Chatsports.com slash Tua. And there's not just jerseys there. You can get a simple t-shirt if you want to save some money. They've got autographed memorabilia as well. All kinds of stuff, even some custom stuff there on top of it. Go check out that link. It is chatsports.com slash Tua.